the Joe Rogan experience. Now, these dogs that you're training, you know, Phoebe was like, that was very interesting listening to how effective. Yeah. Are you using Belgian Malmois? Is that what you're using? Yeah, primarily our main dog is a Belgian Mal. And Those you know, are powerful dogs, man. They are amazing. They're so smart. Yeah. You look in their eyes and they're like, hey, You can man. see it, right? Yeah, they're like, hey, man, how you yeah. doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not like looking at a poodle. No, they're not like looking at our labs. Not they Marshall look right Apollo. Through you. Oh, looking yeah, at like, you with hey, that sweetie. sweet little face. Yeah. Hey. No, those dogs. Tongue out. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that's that's cool about these dogs, and um, and I can't talk enough about it, man, because no matter where you sit, everybody loves a good dog story. And, you know, some people say, well, dual purpose, you got to bite, guys. What's with, with that? Is it, you know, really aggressive? And um, when you look at it, it's a lifesaver for everybody. It's a lifesaver for us. It's a lifesaver for the suspect, too, for, because it usually involves a potential gunfight that the dog basically, you know, alleviated because she or he was there. Um, so we got our canine program in agency going kind of full speed around 2008 ish. And we had three, we had three levels of canine. We have like the companion ride along canine that kind of does everything with you. She's never going to bite anybody. And that's Apollo. That's like my lab. Right. And then we have the detection level dog. And most of those are Labradors like Marshall, like Apollo, because labs have such amazing noses. They really can hold on scent. You know, they, they can train to detect many scents and we certify them in different things. And then there's the Phoebes, you know, the Belgian Mals or the Shepherds. And really, it's become mostly Mals now in our agency. And Why Mals over Shepherds? Um, they just do better in the heat. You know, mm. Shepherds are longer haired. Right. And we're in 100 degree weather. We're on long hikes. You know, we're unsupported. And those dogs might have to sit quietly after hiking eight miles and sit in a prone quietly while we're watching and observing and stalking in on suspects to make an apprehension and arrest safely and hopefully avoid a gunfight. So, and we've also found with the, with the mouths, they, like I said, they just hold up better on average. And there's certainly exceptions to that. Um, but when we got our dual purpose program back on track, these are dogs that will bite when they need to on command, but they have great noses. So they'll still detect wonderfully, you know, finding evidence, finding tainted weed, whatever the case may be, a firearm, a, a bear gallbladder, all of that. But they'll also, you know, like Phoebe was nicknamed the fur missile because when it was time for her to go to work and some guy was going to pull a weapon on us, she was all business. And the cool thing about a dog like her, and, and, and Mike Ritland and I got into this on his show especially, and he was blown away. He said, I've never heard of a dog in a domestic law enforcement team that's had like, she had 116 apprehension bites in her career. And she had- 116? No joke, Joe. So she there's 100... 116 cartel guys out there telling stories about this dog. Yeah, they're saying, <laughs> no more Paro. <laughs> I've been bit too many times. No, but the cool thing about that was the standpoint of life she saved. And mm. she also arrested another eight to 900 that she didn't have to bite in her career. That's a lot. How of... many have you guys arrested? When I retired, we were over a thousand. Wow. In, in five and a half years. Yeah. And we, and, and again, all it's gr all, these are all grow ups, all grow ups. Yeah. These are all grow ups or related to grow ups. So the, the and these are all guys that are armed, all guys that have knives or guns, you know, yeah. that you're not getting bit unless, you know, you're a deadly force threat on some level or a significant threat. So, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of guys. So that number that you're talking about 10,000, that really is conservative. Very, I think it's very much so. Yeah. That is so insane because if yeah. you fly over uh, like Humboldt or any any of these areas, like particularly Mendocino, Northern California, yeah. the the density of the forest and the 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 public land out there, yeah, there's a lot of land. There's a lot of land and a lot of you know potential we're not seeing. So and that's still still thriving. So when you um, you know when you when you look at Phoebe as a canine and you go, well, let's see, she was in the field doing these type of operations for about seven or eight years. And yeah, that's great from a record standpoint and numbers and the life she saved, but it gives you uh, like a like a snapshot of the issue. How many guys did we not catch that were out there armed that right. way that we weren't involved in? You know, yes. we weren't involved. So, um, and the dogs have just saved lives, man. They have saved Phoebe. I go into this in the new book, especially in 2012, but right before our team started, Phoebe saved my life, Brian's life, and all these other operators in Santa Clara County in Silicon Valley, right where I grew up because she engaged a guy that was pulling a, a Russian automatic pistol on me. And I was the support for the, for Brian. I was basically his canine handler or support guy. And Brian had to deal with this other growers partner that had a big Taurus judge revolver on his hip and he was pulling it. So he goes for that guy and says, John, just take my dog. And Phoebe's on the bite and he's biting this guy in the calf. And you know, this guy's nose down and we don't know he's got this weapon. And I start to see it coming out. 
And I get on him and I do what I need to do with some physical control and some strikes and whatnot to get the gun out of his hand. But had she not been on that guy on a bite, Joe, that gun's turned on me at five feet. I'm engaged, all the riflemen behind me. I'm, you know, I'm in a gunfight again. We've been in too many of those already. How many gunfights have you been in? Our team's been in six. And, so, I, and I've been on the ground for four out of the six that our guys have been involved in. And they've all been around this particular problem. Um, we had a lot less once the team got formalized and so we started using dogs, but we still had two during the window of the team being operational that we couldn't avoid. And dogs played a big part in that as I go into in the new stories. It is so crazy. <laughs>